Hey, and welcome back. So we're going to look at some qualitative solution terms. And by qualitative, I mean that I'm not going to have any numbers here. So you often hear bandied around things like unsaturated. I have a difficulty talking and writing. I'm sorry. And an unsaturated solution is a solution that is capable of dissolving more solute. So more solute can dissolve in this kind of solution. So for instance, if you are working with a salt water solution, um, you at room temperature, if you had say one gram of salt dissolved in a hundred grams of water, so this is quite quantitative here on the side, so uh, th this would be an unsaturated solution. And the reason it's unsaturated is it can dissolve more. In fact, we've got solutions that we refer to as saturated and that is telling you that you've got the maximum amount of solute dissolved again for a particular volume or a particular mass of solvent so uh, so for 100 grams we could actually dissolve about 36 grams of salt in room temperature water. So 100 grams of room temperature water could hold about 36 grams of salt. Um, there's another type of solution as well that is called super saturated. And just like Superman is bigger than a man, a super saturated solution is more saturated than a saturated solution. So it has more than the max amount of solute. And you might say, well, what's the point of it being maximum if you can hold more than the maximum well it turns out that it's unstable so although you can temporarily have more solvent in there than a saturated solution it won't stay like that forever so it will eventually crash out of solution so here's a really neat set of pictures so in the solution on the left i have a super saturated solution of sodium acetate so sodium acetate so that's sodium acetate is C2H3O2 minus. So normally we wouldn't write the charges, but there we go. And this is super saturated. So you might say, how um, do you know? Well, this solution actually has more than is stable. And so you can actually take a little crystal. There's actually a little crystal of sodium acetate there and you can touch it to the solution. And uh, let me just go ahead and move over what happens next. So you can see as that crystal touches, it actually causes the solution to become unstable. All that extra sodium acetate no longer dissolves in solution. You can see these crystals start to grow and it's beautiful, right? These spikes little here. So all that extra stuff comes crashing out of solution. And eventually you can see all the way on the right, right? All that extra sodium acetate that wasn't supposed to dissolve eventually comes out of solution. And I always kind of think about this like, like honey, right? So if you've ever had like a very old bottle of honey and you've looked at it, so honey is essentially what sugar and bee spit, then uh, over time it gets kind of crunchy and crystalline. So honey is a super saturated solution of sugar and over time it's just unstable. All that extra sugar will crash out of solution. Let me see if I can dig up a movie of this process here too. The flask contains a supersaturated solution of sodium acetate in water. A small crystal of sodium acetate will be added to the solution. Focus your attention on the portion of the solution to which the crystal is added. Isn't that cool? Look at that. That is really amazing. It gets really hot, by the way, when this happens. It's very exothermic. Here is the process again in slow motion. So all that extra sodium acetate that's not stable, right, comes crashing out of solution. We've got a bottle on the shelf, actually, in the Gen Chem lab. If you ever look over, you'll see it. And it actually has the consistency, I always think, of mashed potato. And you can kind of scoop it out in your hand. Sodium acetate is relatively safe to play with. And it just smells like very hot, gloopy mashed potato when you do it. So that's enough for this lecture. So let's move on to something slightly different.